<laughs> this is uh, um, Jenny and this is Jack and she's in the, the bathroom. Man. Oh, this is Lindsay. <laughs> back and I'm David. And we are a fun data science group. Look at all of this data. We made a data science project. Woohoo! The big question we're trying to ask is how do median income and education attainment in the city of Los Angeles affect the proportion of crimes that are felonies? Our hypothesis is the more income you have and the more education you have, the fewer of your crimes will be felonies. But wait, what even is data science you might be asking? And this is my answer. It's essentially just using computer programming to solve statistical analysis questions. First step of this project is to get the data. So what we did is we went online and found publicly available data from each of the three categories, education, median income, and the amount of crimes reported in Los Angeles. Education data set was very, very messy, but to simplify it, we cleaned it down to just have six categories. It ranged from less than high school all the way to graduate level education. Median household income, I believe there were five categories. It was actually a lot easier because they already separated it out for us. So it ranged from extremely low income all the way to above moderate income. Last but not at least the crime data set. This one was a little trickier, but using the definitions of the United States Department of Defense, we categorized and assigned a value to every one of the crimes. So whatever was a felony, we assigned to felony. Whatever was a misdemeanor, we assigned to a misdemeanor. So now we're looking at the amount, the proportion of severe crimes, which are classified as felonies, in the city of Los Angeles. For the education data, we assigned each category a score from one to six, and then found the weighted average of all of these components. The data set was actually really cool because it reported the exact latitude and longitude of the crime data, where it happened. When we go into our code, we can see we have all of these imports, and all of them do something specific. So for example, GeoPand is right here because we have exact latitude and longitude of our crime data. This helps us wrangle our data geographically. And these down here, like Seaborn, Matplotlib, all these things, they do EDA, exploratory data analysis. They make cool graphs, they make cool figures, and they assign colors and values to them. It's, it's a wild thing, it's super cool. So once all of the data was clean, we were cool to begin exploratory data analysis. For our EDA, we use scatter plots, linear regression, box plots, density plots, and much more. If you keep in mind the categories of our data, and the type of graphs that we're gonna be using, this is the result. If you look behind me, you will see nothing because I don't have a green screen. But if you look right here, whoa, what's that? Oh my gosh. If you look at our density plot, very low income and above moderate income actually have the highest proportion of felonies. According to our box plot, there is a slight positive correlation between median income and the proportion of felonies. However, you'll see that in the density plot, there are more crimes committed in lower income areas to begin with. When comparing the two linear regression graphs, both of these correlations are very weak. We also conducted two statistical tests, as this includes an ANOVA between income categories and t-tests between the different income levels. Based on our ANOVA test, we did receive a p-value of 6.45 times 10 to the negative 7th, and this is lower than our alpha value of 0.05, leading to the rejection of our null hypothesis. When looking at the heat map that shows the t-test between the different income levels, a higher p-value corresponds to more similar distributions, while lower values correspond to less similar distributions. We then did an ordinary least squares regression. We chose a p-value of 0.05 to tell if there is significance or not. For the education estimator, the p-value is larger than 0.05, so we failed to reject the null hypothesis. According to our data, there is no correlation between education and felony proportion, and the positive coefficient suggests that higher income correlates with higher felony proportion. The findings of our project are actually really cool and unexpected. The more money you have and the higher your education level attainment, the more felonies you actually end up committing, or at least proportionally compared to the other groups. However, that information has to be taken with a grain of salt because like most statistics, our project that we ran with our data, it only applies to this certain specific set of data and information. The reason why we have p-values and confidence intervals 
is because it can change. If someone were to run data with different people, different groups in a different area, they'll find something else or they could find very similar results. It just depends on the nature of statistics. I know graphs and programming may not appeal to everybody, but information and learning is very, very important. So thank you very much to my class and thank you very much to my group members who helped me complete this project. It was a fun time and I hope you learned something today.